Now that we've learned the basics of L'Hopital's rule and we learned the two fundamental indeterminate forms that allow us to apply L'Hopital's rule, so just to review, those two indeterminate forms are 0 over 0 or uh, infinity over infinity. And this is actually plus or minus. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Um, but sometimes when we're trying to evaluate limits, we encounter uh, different indeterminate forms. And actually, there are three different types of indeterminate forms that we may encounter. And those are uh, indeterminate products, indeterminate differences, or indeterminate powers. So we're going to go through each one of these uh, and discuss uh, these indeterminate forms and then how we apply L'Hopital's rule uh, if we encounter one of these indeterminate forms. So the first one we're going to discuss is indeterminate products. And basically what that says is if we have some limit as x approaches a of some function f of x times g of x, and when we evaluate that limit, we get 0 times plus or minus infinity, that in fact is an indeterminate, what we call an indeterminate product. Okay, so this indeterminate, it's indeterminate because in this product, we don't know which part of the product, the zero or the plus or minus infinity, dominates. If we multiply and we say that zero dominates, then the actual product would be zero. If we say that the infinity dominates, then it would be plus or minus infinity. It's unclear, so that's why we call it indeterminate product form. Fortunately, we have uh, tools to allow us to handle this situation. So if we encounter indeterminate products, what we can do is rewrite the original limit so that we have the opportunity to, when we evaluate that limit, to get a fundamental indeterminate form of 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity over infinity. So let's write that. So we can rewrite the original limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x. We can write that as we can either write that as f of x over 1 over g of x or we could write it the other way around where we have g of x on the numerator divided by 1 over f of x. Both of these rearrangements are equal to the original limit. Okay? So, how do we apply that? Let's do an example. Let's say, for example, we have a limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times the natural log of x. Okay? And let's say that we're going to call x is equal to f of x and the natural log of x is equal to g of x. Okay? If we do direct substitution, we put x will go to 0 from the right, a number slightly bigger than 0, but really close to 0, times the natural log of 0. And if we evaluate this, what do we get? Well, in order to evaluate this, you have to keep in mind of what the natural log function looks like. Okay? So basically, the natural log function looks something like this, where as you approach, so this is the natural log function, 
Okay? So as you're approaching from all the way out here in infinity, as you're approaching, you're getting closer and closer to zero, what's happening to the natural log function? Well, it's actually approaching negative infinity. So the limit of the natural log function as it approaches zero is actually negative infinity. So we get, when we evaluate this, we get zero times negative infinity. Well, if we look at this, this is the indeterminate product form that we have here. But as it stands, we cannot use L'Hopital's rule because L'Hopital's rule says that we need to have the, answer, the, evaluate, the evaluated answer into one of the fundamental indeterminate forms, which is 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity over infinity. So what do we do? We're going to rearrange as we described here. So let's do that. Let's say now that we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And we have a choice. We can either choose this one, or we can choose this one. A quick uh, trick to learn, to know, is that in most cases, when you're dealing with a natural log function, and you're trying to evaluate limits in this particular situation, you want to try to keep the natural log function in the numerator. So in this particular case, we've labeled uh, g of x as the natural log of x. So we're going to choose this situation where the natural log is in the numerator. So this limit is actually going to be rewritten as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of g of x over 1 over f of x, which is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of g of x, which is the natural log of x over 1 divided by f of x, which is just x. And now we have our limit that's rewritten. If we evaluate this limit now through direct substitution, we get the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the natural log of 0 over 1 divided by 0. We evaluate this. Again, the natural log of 0 as it approaches 0 from the right is going to be negative infinity. The limit of 1 over 0 is actually infinity. So we get one of the fundamental indeterminate forms of infinity over infinity, which is good because that allows us to use L'Hopital's rule. So. In this way, we know that L'Hopital's rule says the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of the derivative of f of x over g of x, sorry, the derivative of f of x over the derivative of g of x. If both f and f and f and g are differentiable, and g prime of x doesn't equal to zero. And we do have those two conditions met. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now, in, when we get to this particular step, we want to go ahead and redefine f and redefine g. When we rewrote our limit, we now have the natural log of x over 1 divided by x. So now our new f of x is going to be the natural log of x. Our new g of x is going to be 1 over x. So that the derivative of, of f is equal to 1 over x, and the derivative of g is equal to uh, basically minus 1 over x squared. So, using L'Hopital's rule, we can rewrite the limit. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the derivative of f, 
which is 1 over x, over the derivative of g, which is minus 1 over x squared, and this is our new limit. So that's equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x multiplied by uh, negative x squared. And we see that the x's cancel out. One of those squares cancel out. So we're just left with basically the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of minus x. I'm sorry, there's no negative here. I apologize, there's no negative here. It's just uh, whenever you take it, this is a negative 2. This is a derivative. I apologize. This will be uh, x squared, which is equal to minus uh, x to the minus 2. So we do have a negative out here. And when you do the algebra, it works out just to be negative x, OK? And if we do direct substitution, we plug the 0 into negative x, we just get 0. So this is basically the situation where we have the indeterminate form, uh, indeterminate products form, where we have 0 times plus or minus infinity. Um, we saw that we got this indeterminate form, so we then wanted to rearrange the original limit so that we get an indeterminate form of 0 over 0 or positive infinity over negative infinity, which we did here. And when we evaluated that, we indeed got infi negative infinity over infinity. That allowed us to apply L'Hopital's rule, where we take the derivative of f and the derivative of g and evaluate that limit. And in this particular situation, it works out to be 0.